Hello and welcome to today's anatomy question. I'm Lizzie Lassiter and we're here with Mary Richards and Kira the dog. Hi, Kira. <laughs> She's like, here's my friend Penelope. <laughs> come Kira girl, come on to the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, get this bolster off my blanket stack. Exactly. I do often set up blankets for her and for Penelope and they will rest on their on blanket stacks in their respective corners. So Jesus. sweet. So today we're continuing with our essential alignment series based on Mama's book, 30 Essential Yoga Poses by Kira. Um, and today we're on pose 24, Upavista Konasana, seated wide angle pose or seated angle pose which I love. I love this pose. Um, before we start, I just want to share the website with everyone, experientialanatomy.yoga. Go there, get on the list. Uh, I really fell in love with this pose while I was pregnant. Mm. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. I've always liked this pose because it's so easy for me. But most so poses are easy for you. They are, they are, especially after 30 years of practicing them. I mean, I certainly have my nemesis poses. Like one, name one nemesis Mary Richards pose. Um, Mary Chiasana D. Oh, but everybody hates that. <laughs> I don't like it. Uh, I don't typically like bound poses. Wait, Mary Chiasana D is the one where you're in half lotus and then you reach around. Yeah. Yeah, I, my arms are short in relationship to my boobage <laughs> and uh, I have, it's true, and I have a deep rib cage. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, I fight with the binds. I yeah. fight with the binds, but you know, it is what it is. We've all got our stuff. So what's your big idea for us about this pose today, Upa Vista? Rain it in especially if it's easy for you. So I used to be able, before I had my hip replaced, to put my belly down on the floor and bring my legs around behind me. Okay, that's not a life skill. Yeah. No one needs to do that. Right. And for most of us, we're doing, in my opinion, too big a pose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, so that we can reap the rewards, especially for the groins and the pelvic floor. That's why we like it so much when we're pregnant because it stretches the pelvic floor. And especially as pregnancy progresses, you feel the pressure in the pelvic floor. Yeah. Uh, at least I remember, I still remember that. And my kids are 19 and 16. So, yeah. You know. And I feel, so even now, what I really like about it is even, even just, you know, a few breaths in this pose and I'll stand up and I feel a different level of freedom in my pelvis. Mm hmm Yeah. So it's really easy for us to overdo this pose. Mm -hmm. And we tend to set our legs too far apart. So I'd like us to practice with our legs a little closer together. Okay. I'm not saying cut your range in half. Mm -hmm. I'm saying reduce it by 10%. Okay. I'm curious to see what you think of my, my post. Shall I start? Or do you have anything else to share with us? Uh, the other thing I'd like to add, and I, I'm terrible about remembering this for myself, okay. but you know, I repeat it so that I will do it myself sit up on something, even if it's, uh-huh, that's the way I feel about it because I can just pop down onto the floor and boom, down into the pose. But I want us to practice healthy biomechanics more often than not, especially when we're seated. So sitting up on the edge of a blanket. Okay, let's okay, try sorry. it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Okay, one moment. Let me switch onto the mat. All right, so Mary was talking about this corner trick with the blanket sitting on the corner. But what I really like is to sit on one of these little balls. It's sort of a, it's a courageous ball. 
from tuna. And I just kind of sit on that and tilt forward. Yeah, I love the ball, especially for women, especially if you've carried pregnancy to term. I think it just provides excellent feedback to the pelvic floor. And, you know, one of the primary benefits of this pose is how it stretches the, you know, the groins and the pelvic floor. Yeah, I feel and by adding yeah. an unstable surface. Right. Yeah, yeah. So you're pretty wide. Okay. You know, you're pretty wide in the leg position. So just rein it in a little bit. Just, yeah, there you go. And uh, notice how much you're pushing out through the balls of your feet. Push out through your, hmm? Yeah, that's what I thought I was supposed to be doing. That's what I'm consciously trying to do. What would you prefer? Push out through your heels. Okay. Push out through your heels and turn your thighs away from one another a bit more. Externally rotate, yes. And now really push out through your heels. Okay. And just wiggle your toes, let your toes relax a bit. No electric feet. It's really But hot. keep pushing out through your heels and keep your heels glued to the floor. So they're glued to the floor, but you're trying to push them out away from you. And this pose, again, it, it, it's initiated from the rotation of the pelvis over and around the heads of the thigh bones, not from the low back. We'll see a lot of people kind of like a, a, a turtle or a rabbit diving down into its burrow. I want you to really focus on rotating your pelvis first. Let me show from the side because what I see, yeah, is like, this person yes yes and so what you're saying you what you're suggesting instead is sitting on something like a blanket or a ball so that we become this person yes yes that was so clear and we want to resist the temptation to turn our thigh bones inward yeah we i want to actively turn your thigh bones outward that's new for me okay See, we're in abduction, so the legs are moved away from the midline, and what joint action, passive joint action goes with abduction? External rotation. Okay. So we want to keep them together, and then when you're ready, you just roll the pelvis into the space between the legs. Yes, press the thigh bones down, let your pelvis move, Press down and out through your heels. Yes. So how does that feel, Lizzie? It feels fabulous. I just forgot to have a block ready for my forehead. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's wonderful. You can put your, your, you can put your head on a chair, blocks, a bolster. You can stack your fists. Uh, you adjust the amplitude of the pose for you. But the key is don't lose the awareness in your legs. We tend to get, we settle into this posture, especially if it's easy for us. And I want us to add an element of resistance, which means you're, you're, you're not trying to force external rotation. You just wanna resist the tendency to roll into the big toe sides of the feet. Yeah. And you keep pushing out through the heels because then you'll feel a wealth of sensation through the backs of the legs. Yes. Oh, fabulous. All right, let me come say goodbye. All right. I love those balls. I use them all the time. It's me too. So the... What I found interesting recently was thinking about this pose being really beneficial, surprisingly, as we age, because we can lose this ability in our, in our legs to open in that direction as we age, which you might not think you need in everyday life, but it means you might not be able to ride a bicycle anymore or 
you know, a, a motorcycle or, you know, like be able to get on a horse or like those kind of m movements because you literally your legs don't, your, your hip joints have lost that range of motion, right, Mary? It can make it hard to put your shoes on. Mm -hmm. And we want to preserve that for sure. And the key is, again, that we maintain an alertness in the legs. Mm -hmm. And so this is thinking about what naturally goes with the pose. So the legs are farther apart. That means no internal rotation. Right. Okay, if I push through my heels, how is that affecting my pelvic floor and my groins? Versus, you know, what's, what's the difference when I push through the balls of my feet? Mm -hmm. So I like the heels because I'm thinking about the kinetic chain mm -hmm. and how I can, you know, really enliven the posterior kinetic chain in particular because it's really the back body that's pulling us around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mm. my nose is itching so but yeah this, this action of we we have we really want to maintain as much range of motion in the hips with stability as we can because it's the primary axis of movement in the body right okay and one last review point before we close why did you say not to open as up to maximum width as we can? Why, why do you want us to do a little bit less here? Because when we go as far as we can, first of all, then where do you go? Mm -hmm. Right there. You can't add progressive load to the pose. Mm -hmm. And I think that we perhaps don't pay as much attention to progressive load as I would prefer. Right. And also, it's much harder to maintain neutral femurs when you're farther out. You'll see this all the time with, you know, the Gumbies in the class, legs really far apart and they're rolling toward the big toe sides of the feet. In fact, the big toe side of the foot may even be resting on the mat or on the floor. Yeah. And that's not healthy for the hip. Okay, it's not good for your hip. It's not good for the soft tissue in the joint itself. Mm -hmm. So that's why I want us to rein it in a bit so that we can really position the joints for normal, maximal movement. Yeah, and I love the my head on a chair. Like, yes. that's so delicious because you can stay. That's what I would do when I was pregnant because you could stay for a really long time and it's just heaven. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I would sit in that pose. I, I spent a lot of time in supported Upavista Kanasana last year when I was having so many gynecological problems. <laughs> and it helped me psychologically and it helped me physically. Yeah. Oh, so good. Thank you so much, Mary. Tell us where we can find you online. You can find me at Yoga with Mary Richards on Instagram and Facebook and uh, maryrichardsyoga.com. Though that's changing because I am having my website redone and that's going to be Yoga with Mary Richards too. Okay, wonderful. This is the website. One more time, experientialanatomy.yoga. Go there, get in touch, get on our mailing list and we will send you uh, whenever new videos come out. All right. Namaste. Namaste, Lizzie. I'm gonna nama go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.